So in this short video, we'll be looking at short lecture. We'll be looking at some samples in the deviation. So the samples in the deviation, the formula is given by first of all is x i minus x bar squared, and then I add them all up and divide by n minus one. Now you may have previously been dividing by n, but now we we'll divide by n minus one. Always we divide by n minus one and not n. And if I use my results from the previous lecture, I can expand this out as the sum of xi squared minus nx bar squared, and then I put the n minus 1 outside there. Remember, always divide by n minus 1. If I take the square root of this, the positive square root, then I get what's called the standard deviation, and all that means is I just take the square root of this whole, of this whole uh, expression. So, computing variance. It's actually usually simpler to compute the variance using the second formula here. So as I saw earlier here, we had xi squared minus the nx bar squared in this one. That's the formula that's used for computing the deviation. That's an easier formula to use. So as an example, we have got some data with some summaries. And when the sum of the numbers is 10, and the sum of the squares is 100. Now, this is the number of observations. This means n equals 10. So I want the mean and variance. So x bar here, my formula is 1 over n times the sum of the numbers. So sum from i equals 1 to, in this case, 10. So I'll replace the n by 10 of xi. So the sum is 10 and the n is 10. This gives me a 1. And the variance here is squared is 1 over n minus 1. So this is 1 over 9. That's n minus 1 in this case. And I have here, the formula says the sum of xi squares. So I'll write that down here, sum from 1 to 10 of xi squared, minus n is 10 times x bar squared. So that comes to 1 over 9. The sum of xi squared is 100, minus 10 times xi Eight times the ten times x bar squared. That's one. This is ninety over nine. That's going to be equal to ten. So the variance here works out to be ten fairly simply. Okay. So just quickly, we we'll look at some transformations of data as well. If I look at transformations of data, I'll leave the example out. But the basic rule that follows is that. If I've got data x1, x2 up to xn, and it has got mean x bar n variance s squared, I transform the data, so I use some kind of function or formula. So the new data yi's are just some number a times xi plus some number b. So what I'm doing is doing some transformation of data. And if I don't have the uh, xi values, I can't compute, if I don't have the xi values, I can't compute the yi values. But if I do have the mean and variance of the x r x's, I can work out the mean and variance of the y's. And the formulas that follow are that the y bar is exactly in the same way, a x bar plus b. So the mean for the y's is in the same function form. But the variance is a squared is x squared. So the idea is, if I take all the data and scale the thing by a and move it around, the mean will move in the same way. But because the variance is the measure of spread, if my original data looks like this, I transform it, it now is going to be somewhere else. But it still looks the same. So the spread here is the same, and because variance is a measure of spread, the formula here won't actually use the B. But it will use the A, because if I scale this by A, this is just the plus B part, Scale this by a. <coughs> then, what will happen is, it will become a lot, lot wider, or maybe not narrower, lot narrower. In either case, I'm going to change the spread. So the spread is affected by a, and since the deviation is the measure of spread, so you can see the a appears here. The only problem is that the a can be negative, so we make sure it's positive by taking the absolute value of it. Absolute value simply means whatever the number is, make it positive. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. And of course, because 4 is already positive, its absolute value is 4 as well. So 
So this transformation idea is important, and we may, may be using this somewhere in other places. And so we get to two more points. One is what we call standardized scores. I can scale the data and I can shift the data in, some, in such a way that I can make the mean zero and I can make the standard deviation one. And this is all this happening. Again, I want to go through the proof over here. But the basic idea is if I take the data and subtract the mean from it, if I subtract the mean from every other point, that means the resulting data now has mean zero. So if the mean was somewhere here, and if I subtract the mean from everything, it now comes to zero. You can see that now the data will be placed around here. And if I scale the thing, if I squeeze it down, I can always make this standard deviation equal to one. This is all this is saying. I move the data to zero so that by the mean, so the mean is zero, and I scale the thing by its current standard deviation, so it becomes now standard deviation one. So whenever I have this transformation, it's called standardization. where I subtract the mean and then divide by standard deviation. The resulting data will have mean 0 and standard deviation 1. We'll have a look at this again in tubes afterwards. Sometimes we perform non-linear transformations of data. And the reason we do that is if you've got data that's skewed, we can make it more symmetrical by some transformation. And the usual transformation are going to be either log or square root or other if it's right skewed. And the idea is, if the data looks like this, by taking the log of square root, we put, take the large values and, and put them inwards. And so we hope we'll get data that looks more symmetric. So in this case, as I was saying, if I take a look at these numbers over here, if I took a look at the square roots of these, these actually are quite far apart over here at the top end. But if I take a look at the square roots, they all become the same distance apart. So you can see it pulls the tail inwards. On the other hand, if it's left skewed, then I want to pull the tail outwards. So if it looks like this, I can't do anything with this, but I can pull this outwards. And I can do that by expanding the data out by taking exponentials or square or other powers. And so again, you can see if I have the same data here, one, two, I want to make it left skewed, so I won't bother with an example, but what you'll find is that we can do this uh, expanding the tail out. Now, this is often used uh, to make data more symmetrical, and we require some trial and error to pick out the best transformation. So it, not may, it might not be, in this case, for example, square root seem to work, but it might be log that works better, or cube root, or some other root. So it's a matter of trialing a little bit. We'll see more of this in regression analysis, because that's going to be used. Example over here is, here we've got data that's right skewed, and if I take a look at the log, it actually now becomes a left skewed. So the log is quite extreme. If I look at square root, it has improved the symmetry, but it's still a bit left skewed. But cube root makes it fairly symmetric. So this is the best over here, cube root. Another example for left skewed data. If I take a look at the square, it looks fairly symmetric. In this case, the cube also looks bad, good. And the exponential seems to do fairly well as well. So in this case, it looks like all of them are reasonable, but this is probably the best. It gives you the most symmetry. This is also okay. So both of these seem okay. An example of how very simple summaries of data can actually do something remarkable, we'll have a look at this in the lecture itself.